poet Goethe said that architecture is like frozen music. But for me, architecture is much more like live theatre. Architecture structures space, and space allows us to enact our stories within it. Just think of all the extraordinary stories that have been enacted within these walls, the banqueting house. This is the Royal Exchange Building in Manchester. Until the 1960s or so, it was the biggest trading house in Europe, was incredibly successful in trading cotton and textiles, and was hugely important in allowing Manchester to become the prosperous city that it is today. It also inevitably had links to the slave trade, and is a building, as they say, steeped in history. My history with the building is a very personal one. I worked here backstage, because in the 1970s, this trading house was actually transformed into a very successful theatre. The architect Levitt Bernstein had a very, very clever idea of actually landing a sort of lunar pod into this trading hall so that the Victorian space remains, but a modern use is created. Now, I worked here backstage, as I said, and the joy of it was that working backstage here was actually working front stage in the building. It was almost like an informal year at architecture school where I got night after night to sit hearing the play going on in the background inside the lunar pod but actually spending time gazing up at the building, understanding how the structures worked, and looking at the stock prices, hearing the voices of the 19th century traders. And what I learned from this experience, which is such a privilege, was how architecture affects how we feel about ourselves. Architecture affects how we think about where we've come from, and very critically, architecture affects how we feel about where we're going to go. In 1941, a bomb hit the Houses of Parliament. And at that time, some MPs thought this would be a great opportunity to modernize what had become something of a fossil. Architecturally speaking, the Houses of Parliament is something of a schizophrenic uh, structure. It has a classical plan by Charles Barry, and it has a Gothic exterior decoration by Pugin, which in effect means that we have a pagan temple with a medieval church clothing. Churchill was completely adamant that this was a terrible idea and that rebuilding the Houses of Parliament at such a critical time when the country was at war was a really bad idea. He said, we shape our buildings, and afterwards, they shape us. Now, it seems to me that Churchill really understood the importance of architecture, the importance of buildings to tell stories. In totalitarian regimes such as fascist Italy or um, Soviet Russia, you can see that the buildings, the public buildings which were built at that time, give a much more monumental and unequivocal sense of authority. Um, this building, which is in Rome, by, uh, was commissioned by Mussolini, and the six stories and the nine bays are quite literally inspired by the fact that Benito has six letters and Mussolini has nine. Now, that lack of sophistication, which is quite amusing today, is actually very, very important in terms of the singularity of the message that was trying to be communicated at the time. By contrast, buildings which are representing national democracy, they have to have a much more polyphonic message. They have to include all sorts of much more complex ideas, and they have to include a sense of individualism. In the 1840s, when the Houses of Parliament was beginning to be built, it was quite an extraordinary project because it was the first time that a purpose-built parliament was being created in this country. Previous to this, the various palaces of kings and all sorts of other spaces had been, had been used and been adapted for some form of parliamentary representation or discussion. But actually, this was the first time that we were going to have our own parliament building. So it was an extraordinary time. Um, Nonetheless, um, as a result of the fact that the uh, architects Charles Barry and Pugin had to deal with existing medieval structures, there was an awful lot of layering of story that they had to work with. And I would say largely thanks to Pugin. This is a building that, in spite of its novelty, in spite of the sort of great innovation of democracy, it still is a building that looks back. It's a building that looks back to the medieval craftsmen, and it looks back to a pre-enlightenment age. And by the time it was finished in 1870, after 30 years of trying to be built, it was already falling out of favor. The Crystal Palace was one of the major reasons why the Gothic architecture was falling out of favor. The Crystal Palace, a huge structure of iron and steel, created a whole new sense of space. It created a whole new sense of how we might be in the world, 
and it created a whole new sense and a whole new story about the hugely exciting future we were going towards. Crystal Palace, 1851, this was 1870. So two very, very different stories were being told to the nation at the same time. So um, the importance of Big Ben really can't be overestimated. Um, it's a huge international icon. Uh, I think it's an image of which we're all very fond. But when I actually came to visit and tried to connect with my own building, tried to connect with my own democratic story, this was the experience that I got. And it wasn't a particularly happy one. This message to me definitely screamed, keep out, you're not very welcome. Um, there were lots of quite stern signs from somebody called Black Rod, who was going to punish me sorely if I did anything wrong. Um, the public spaces were very cluttered, and I didn't really feel that I had the sense of sort of joy in, in the democratic project that I really wanted to have. This four-lane highway around Parliament Square and Bridge Street was more effective than a moat and drawbridge, I thought, to actually keep me out from the parliamentary space. But actually, if you look at other projects for democracy, you can see architecture and democracy working much better together. This is the Scottish Parliament in Edinburgh. It nestles quite gently, uh, it's a campus of buildings, and it nestles quite gently into the old city. Um, and you can just approach it very easily, and it has a very strong physical connection, a physical connection to the people and to the rest of the nation. Um, the architectural motifs are inspired by Scottish history, um, and it's a national building, but it is connected to bigger ideas about democracy, this is based on the idea of an agora. And the agora was a traditional Greek space of meeting, of conversation, of exchange of ideas. And the seating of the, the layout of the chamber is very much um, based on the idea of exchange rather than you're with us or you're against us, which is what comes across at Westminster. You might say that old buildings, that new buildings are much easier to express democracy because we've got the new ideas, we know what democracy is today, so if you're starting afresh, it's much easier. This is the 19th century parliament building in Berlin, the Reichstag, which had lain pretty much empty after the Russians set fire to it during World War II. But actually, in the 1990s, it was refurbished and repurposed to represent the newly reunified Germany. A fabulous new dome was set on top of it, so a whole new layer, a whole new story was standing on top of the somewhat troubled history of the old building before it. And what's extraordinary about this building is that the German people can literally walk above and look down into the chamber, so they can oversee, they can, they can preside over their government, who we think of as presiding over us. Um, today, throughout the world, from Rangoon to Tahrir Square, people are fighting for democracy. We in the United Kingdom have been extraordinarily fortunate to inherit this great gift of democracy. And when I look at the, West, the uh, Westminster and the Houses of Parliament, I really feel, as a designer, that the stories our buildings tell us are not the right ones. I think it's time to build on Pugin and Barry's ideas. It's time to build something new and to create a much better public space. It's time to build and revitalize democracy for our age. And it's time to create a building that reconnects Parliament back to the people. Thank you very much.